good afternoon, very good evening. Can everyone hear me and see my screen? This is the webinar for uh, market direction with candlestick formations. Okay, where is everyone from? Okay, Australia, US, UK, Dubai, Egypt, Holland, Japan, Middle East, India, London, Slovenia, uh, Malaysia, Perth, Miami, all right, Antarctica as well, wow. Okay, great, great. Okay, Spain. All right, so we've got people from all around the world here. Okay, so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to discuss a little bit on uh, candlestick patterns, and we're going to go from the very basics all the way up to um, any required information to understand how we're going to use candlestick patterns to uh, uh, predict the Forex markets. Now, um, putting that all that information together, uh, this webinar is approximately an hour long. We're going to spend around like 15 minutes going over uh, the theoretical part of the candlesticks, and then we'll spend the remaining 45 minutes uh, of doing some uh, teaching you guys some patterns, and then we'll show you guys some examples, and then testing you guys, making sure you guys can actually point out which ones are which. So we're going to do a little bit of everything, and uh, little quizzes and um, you know interaction also. Um, yes, the webinar is recorded. And uh, also uh, the previous webinar on correlation that should be out probably this week. This webinar should follow that immediately. Um, we'll come out together. So um, if there's any questions, try to see if you can hold them towards the end. If you are confused, ask me in between. Um, if there's any issues with audio, I am sorry. Sometimes that happens due to my internet connection. But it is recorded, so... Just uh, bear with me throughout the hour. Okay, so candlestick patterns. Okay, basic history on candlestick patterns. Okay, candlestick patterns were developed in the 18th century uh, by this dude over here. He was a Japanese rice trader of the financial instruments. Okay, and then it uh, was brought to uh, the Western world by Steve Nissen uh, with his books, Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques. Okay, now. How many of you guys have been using uh, candlestick patterns and how many of you guys use different charts? Okay. Okay, seems like a lot of people use candles. Okay, so um, can everyone see the things drawn on my screen um, on the whiteboard, the blue and red candle? Okay, so going with the very basics, okay? Now, when the candle opens up, okay, what does the blue candle represent? Okay, uh, a uptrend or a bullish candle or a long. Okay. It simply means that the market in that particular candle went long. Okay, each candle represents a specific time frame. Okay, what the time frame is depends on your uh, our, your meta trader. You can set it to whatever you want. You know, the one hour, thirty minutes, uh, fifteen minutes. So, if you, if for example, if you set your charts to the one hour time frame, which means each of these candles represents one hour worth of data. Okay, now. Um, having that said, this blue candle, now, the market opens up here. Okay, it had opened up here. Okay. It closed over here at this top of this blue zone. This is the reason why it's blue, because it is above the open. That's why the, this part is blue. Okay. What is this area called here? What is this big solid area called? 
Okay, that is what we call the body, that is referred to as the body. Okay, these pointy things that come out of that is referred to as the wick or tails. Okay, I, I like to call it tails, but the professional word is called wicks, W-I-C-K-S. Okay, now, what these wicks basically mean, uh, I wonder if I can backspace this, um, yes I can. What these wicks basically mean is, uh, is simply this, that that is the highest point the market has gone to, and this one represents that is the lowest the market has gone to. So this tells you in this one, if, if you had a one hour chart running, this one particular candle tells you in this exact one hour, the market opened up here. This is the lowest point it's gone in that one hour. This is the highest point it has gone in that one hour. And the candle ended up closing at the end of the hour over here. So you have the entire information within one candle of the entire hour, what happened in that one hour. Okay, so the market ended up closing higher than it opened. That's why it's blue. Now, reverse the scenario and then you have a red candle. <clears throat> the market opens up here at the top. Oh, sorry. My drawing is like Fibonacci and Picasso. Okay. And the market closed down here. Okay. Since the close is below the open, that's why the shade is red. Okay. This is again what we refer to as what? Okay, good. Body. Also, and then uh, this is the highest point the market has gone to, and this is the lowest point the market has gone to. Okay, now these tails or wicks that come out, they always tell a story. Okay, it gives you an indication of uh, pressure in the market, but we'll get into that much, much later. Okay, right now we got the basics down, okay? So, started in the 18th century, this is a new way of looking at the markets before it was just whole bunch of lines going up and down, which is what we call the line chart. Uh, and then this was uh, brought into the game and, you know, all the data is consolidated into one candle and it, it makes sense. Okay, so let's get back to the screen sharing. In fact, let me open up some notes first. Okay. The notes should pop up right now. Okay, we're going to discuss a couple of things. Okay, the market has basically two things when it comes to uh, candles, or actually three things. Okay, consolidation basically means there's no direction. You can't really understand which way it wants to go. It's just um, stuck in the middle. Okay, we'll discuss that as well. Okay, so trend continuation patterns, we have a couple, false exhaustions, reversals, we have exhaustions, okay, these are a lot of the terminologies that uh, we use at Urban Forex, and uh, we're going to stick to them to avoid any confusion, there is a whole bunch of words that revolve around just one of these words. Um, there's like 50 different names for a lot of these candlestick patterns, but we're gonna stick to the very basics. So we're gonna stick to stuff that's needed, okay? Um, I can write an entire book on candlesticks on which one has more strength, which one has little strength, but no, 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 that's, that's just too complex. We don't need to get into all of that. Okay, we need to know what is useful for trading and that's it, nothing more, okay? <clears throat> so we have false exhaustions, we have exhaustions, uh, consolidations, we have uh, patterns that are like uh, what we call doji, okay, indecision patterns. Am I spelling this wrong? Okay, indecision. Um, 
Okay, so we'll uh, we'll get into these. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on the side. Okay, and let's get back to the screen sharing. Okay, at any point if my screen freezes, uh, do let me know. Okay, so. <clears throat> One of the patterns is a what we call an exhaustion pattern, which many of you guys are familiar, um, and uh, some of you guys are not. Okay, how many of you guys are members of Urban Forex uh, from my previous webinars or have seen me on YouTube and uh, have come here? Hi all, I went uh, somewhere else. Okay, a lot of you guys. Okay. Uh, and um, I guess the question comes out to be is how many of you guys are absolutely new? Like first time here or just recently joined Urban Forex? Okay, Peter, Hamdi, okay, Thomas, okay. Second time, first time. Okay, so there's there's also quite a bit of you guys who are quite new, are re really new here. Okay, so. One of the patterns, one of my uh, favorite patterns, is uh, an exhaustion pattern. Okay, this is one of my favorite ones. And let's show you a clear example of uh, what an exhaustion pattern looks like. And uh, we'll take it from there. Okay. Now, this candlestick pattern here is what we call an exhaustion okay what an exhaustion basically means is the market tries to go in one direction and it could not go it comes back and it closes near the open and hence the term it gets exhausted okay now <clears throat> since this candle is red we know the opening was towards the top of uh, the body the close was towards the bottom of the body. The market tried to go as far as this level down here and uh, it couldn't stay there so it, there was too much pressure going north. So the market comes back up and it closes near the open and you can see on the top there's a very little tail. Okay, that's as high as it went, this is as low as it went. So this tail that you see is uh, very significant. You know, it's Look at the size of this candle. First of all, it's a it's a pretty pretty decent sized candle compared to the past. It's a it's a very large candle. The tail is sticking out. You can see it from a distance. If if you hadn't seen the market in the future, if you were to just to go like right there, you can actually spot this from a distance and be like, wow, look at that tail. Like it's huge. Okay. When you have an exhaustion candle like this, this indicates a reversal in the market, a, a change in trend. Okay. Um, it could mean a change in the temporary trend, it could also mean a change in the long-term trend, but uh, we can get into all of that stuff later. As of right now, this candle indicates a reversal in the market, okay? And once this candle shows up, we have an idea, the next candle opens, and voila, okay, we see a reversal. And this happens all the time. Now, <clears throat> how big the exhaustion candle is makes, a, makes a quite a big difference. I'll uh, take a look at this particular pattern. This is also an exhaustion candle. But uh, look at the strength of the last candle. Look how strong that's coming down. Look at the size of this candle. It's quite small, right, compared to the previous candle. This is why the strength is not so, not so good on this one. So you must also make sure that when you have an exhaustion candle, it's a pretty decent sized candle that can uh, hold some weight and say, okay. Now take a look at this pattern also what we call an exhaustion candle see now the reason why you don't have a color on this one is because the open and the close ended up um, at the same price this is why you don't see a body okay there's a very small tail on top this is how low as it went the previous candle is not so big the exhaustion candle is big next candle opened up took the market in a different direction okay Everyone with me so far? Okay. Yeah, I can get into the doji. I'll get into the doji stuff much later. Okay. 
we'll get into the exact types of dojis and stuff like that in a while. All right, now more examples. So we'll get to more examples. Here is an exhaustion that did not work out right here. Why did this exhaustion not work out? Okay, Hassan says it's small. Sardar says previous candle. Abino says small compared to the previous. Okay, good, good. So you guys are on, on the right track. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on. Let's get some more examples for you guys and then we move on to the uh, other patterns. Okay. Let me see if I can find you an exhaustion uh, that uh, goes the other way. Okay, maybe we'll go to Swiss Franks. We can find exhaustions for the other side. Okay. The amount of times exhaustions show up is not common, but when they do show up and they have strength, then uh, they do make a scene. Okay, there we go. Okay, exhaustion candle. Body opened up here. It went high as this area here, higher than uh, you can see. There's it hasn't gone this high in a while. Um, lots of space on the candle uh, on the tail it sticks out plus the previous candle was quite small and then the market ended up closing near the open a small tail on the bottom took the market into a reversal direction <clears throat> so these exhaustion candles usually they show up during a trend yeah not in a sideways market they show up only during a trend um, yes uh, in fact I mean it is what we call a pin bar or a hammer or an upside down hammer. You can give it any words you want to give it. Um, but uh, yes, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. So moving on forward, uh, the reason why I like to use the word exhaustion is because it's uh, I, because when I explain it that the market gets exhausted and it cannot go further, you know, it, people tend to understand and catch on it quickly. Okay, so here's another example for the market turning around to the south. The market was an uptrend here, an immediate uptrend. Large tail comes out. It hasn't gone this high in quite some time. And then it's bigger than the previous candle. Very small body, small uh, tail on the bottom. And boom, the market turns around. Now you can do a couple of things. You can always take your arrow, you can put it onto the body and uh, keep the tail coming out of the other side of the arrow you can find that the direction almost like a firework okay a firecracker uh kono yes as long as one side uh, has a decent sized tail the other side can have a small tail that's okay but make sure the other size uh, other side tail does not end up exceeding too too large um outs like for example this is a bad exhaustion Okay, you can see how the tail on the other side, even though we have majorities on the top, the tail on the other side pretty much is triple the size of the body. That's that's too much. That's too much. The body must be on one corner of the candle, either on top or on the bottom. It must be in one corner. Okay. Okay, can you please explain the last candle of the previous candle on the screen? Okay. Okay, close of the day, Asian session running, not much momentum in the market, plus sideways. Okay, lots of strength coming in, lots of strength coming in. Okay, market actually is short, but look how long it took to take that short. It took a while before the market actually um, got back into the momentum. I'm guessing this is where around uh, Frankfurt Open. Okay. So if you will get exhaustion sometimes during a late Asian session, and uh, that will um, it, it will be quite slow. Now, is this uh, an exhaustion candle?
Uh, James, that is correct. So if it's not in a trending market, disregard it. Yes. Okay, Jared says previous candle was too big. Yes. Uh, the session you trade is important, Kono. Uh, yes, that is correct also. Um, try to stick to the most frequently traded sessions, such as uh, the US or the European sessions. I know um, when we look at Forex, all of us, we assume that, uh, oh, it's a nice 24-hour market and we can live wherever we want to, trade whenever we want to. That's not really the case. You know, you can, you can only trade when there's actually, you know, other people trading with you. You know, the, the more there are, the more fun it is to trade. And uh, uh, you can obviously uh, sense the direction with when there's more, more people trading. Okay. All right. A minor exhaustion here. Small example here. Market was trending down very, very heavily. It slowed down. Next candle opened. It opened at the top here because it's red. It opened up here, closed over here. This is how low as it went. This is how high as it went. Is is the tail two or three times bigger than the body? The tail on top. No, right? This gives you a a valid exhaustion. The tail on uh, the other side on the bottom is significant, but the tail on top is not significant enough to take away um, the focus of the exhaustion. So the next candle opens up, hovers around a little bit, and then heads north. Okay. So that is pretty much uh, a, a criteria of an exhaustion. Okay, everyone with me so far? Okay, Frank says uh, asymmetrical tail is key. Yes, as long as the body is uh, uh, as big as the tail uh, on one side or, uh, or bigger than the tail on one side, then you're okay. Okay, so, so far so good. Everyone's with me in here. Okay, now, let's move to, um, okay, actually, here's a quiz right here. Is this an exhaustion or is this not an exhaustion? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, let me, let's get to the next question. Okay, what is this? Okay, okay, everyone seems to understand this. Okay, this is what we call a trend continuation pattern. Okay. It almost looks like an exhaustion, doesn't it? But it, it, it's not within a trend. It's not telling you to reverse. Okay. Now, forget the direction of a reversal and everything. Just look at this particular candle. What does this indicate to you? We have a body here, right? It opened here. It closed here. This is how low as it went. This is how high as it went. Okay. The tail on top, not so big. The tail on bottom, massive. What does that mean? Okay, this is an indication that there is lots of pressure from the bottom pushing it up. Okay, lots of pressure coming in from the bottom pushing this up. Like imagine this arrow just pushing it up more and more and more, and that's why you have this body like this. Okay, this is what we call a trend continuation pattern, and uh, these happen all around the place. Okay, it's almost like an upside down exhaustion. Okay, let me show you another example. Okay, here we go. This is an exhaustion as well, but it's upside down. If it was the other way around, it would tell us the market wants to go long. But it's upside down. 
it went long it came down and it closed here it's an upside down exhaustion telling you that there is too much pressure on the top for a sell there's a lot of people who are trying to sell next candle opens up and the market continues okay so far so far so good okay let's get some more examples here take a look at this pattern here okay market moves north next candle opens up come as far as this point here comes back up closes near the open small tail on top also a trend continuation pattern pushing it for the north okay how big the candle is makes a difference okay uh vijay does the color of the bar convey any message no no do not worry about the color of the bar okay in terms of exhaustion and trend continuations don't worry about the color okay so let's move on to some more examples okay remember if it's a trend continuation pattern that means what must be present Okay, Ahmed, good. The word trend continuation pattern, the first word is trend. Okay, the trend must be there for it to continue. Okay, 16 July, 1400, or is 1400? Okay, this one here. This green one here, I'm guessing you're talking about? Okay. Now, what is wrong with this particular candle? Oh, the one after. The one after. Th this is not a trend continuation pattern. We'll we'll uh, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. We're, let's not get ahead of ourselves. One one at a time. Okay. So let's move on. Let's move on. Let's see some more patterns, and then uh, so we can step into the next pattern. Now, take a look at this area here. Okay. Which direction do we have this area here? We have a nice downtrend happening. Okay. In this downtrend, this thing showed up. Okay. Upside down exhaustion, indicating a trend continuation pattern. Okay, look at the size of the candle versus the previous candle. It's quite significant. Okay, it continues the market. Okay. This is somewhat of a trend. No, I should bad example. Bad example. Okay. If you want to okay, um, that's also an exhaustion, yes. If you actually look at it in a smaller trend. In this last three candles, yes, it's been an uptrend in the last three candles, and then you have an exhaustion. So, in that way, it's also an exhaustion, yes. Okay, uh, Tom, did you have a question? I see your hand raised. Okay, let's move on forward. Let's get you another one or two uh, examples of trend continuation patterns, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so... Indications of this one? Okay, let's do this one at a time. Okay, arrow number one. What is arrow number one? Okay, continuation, continuation, continuation. Okay, good. Arrow number two. What would you say? Okay, Michelle, it's it's also a continuation. Uh, both of these are trend continuation. These are upside down exhaustion candles. Okay. Now, is the second one significant?
Okay. Most of you guys are saying yes, yes, yes. Okay, and then the third one. Okay, a lot of you guys are saying exhaustion, exhaustion, exhaustion. Okay, so here's what we're doing wrong here. We're, we're looking at the market outside of the candle. Okay, remember, when you point to a particular candle, imagine you haven't seen the next market. Okay, the first one, okay. Maybe it indicates the market wants to go long. I, I can give you guys that one, okay? Um, it's almost like a 50-50. Step one, we had this little exhaustion wannabe here, which is not a clear exhaustion because the previous candle is too big, okay? It's an exhaustion lookalike, but it still ended up pushing the market north, okay? Fine. The next candle opened up, also indicating it wants to go further north. Okay, so I can, for the first um, arrow, I can give you yes, it's a trend continuation pattern. The reason why I say possibly no is because look at the size of the previous candle. Big. Okay, let's go to the second candle. Sorry, second one. Okay, the market goes extremely long, comes all the way down, and creates this tail on top. And then the next candle opens up, goes all the way down, and closes all the way up here. This is a caution, okay? And second of all, it's also not a trend continuation pattern because the size of the previous candle is massive. So, first one to be, if you go exactly by the books, false. Second one, false. You go to the third one, also false. None of these are correct. Now, it seems correct because we saw the we saw the chart ahead of time. Okay? So, be careful there. It's something you guys need to practice on. The market is not what it always seems, okay? Always, at the end of it all, uh, you need live experience of this. And uh, as we get closer, in fact... Uh, it's 8.06 now. What we're going to do is let's take a look at uh, the current candles and see. Okay, Euro USD, pound. Let me see if I can find you guys a live example. Oh, there's such nice examples right now, but uh, we need to get, we need to learn more patterns. Okay. 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 Going back, going back. Okay. So everyone understood why all those three were incorrect. Okay. We have uh, one person says repeat Tim also confused. Okay. Let's go back to that one. That was, uh, that was on Swiss franc. And uh, I know exactly where that was. Give me a second here. How far did I go for this one? Okay, I'm just gonna find you a different example. Uh, and then uh, we'll point it, point this one out. Okay, what about this particular one here? Is this a trend continuation pattern? Uh, James Tenchelai. Okay, I'll uh, take a look at it. Alvin, I got to go already. Thanks. Anyways, catch up with the webinar tomorrow. Okay, take care, Alvin. I'll see you in the conference room tomorrow. Okay, this is a trend continuation pattern. Here's why. First things first, do we have a trend? Yes. We have a nice trend going upwards. Second thing, this is an upside down exhaustion candle. Large tail, body on one side of the candle, but it's upside down. Okay. If it was the other way around, if the tail was on top, 
this would reverse the market, right? It would reverse the market. But um, also at the same time, the previous candle is not that big compared to the uh, trend continuation pattern. Market resumes, okay? It takes the next candle and we go up, okay? It's not a home run, it's not a thousand pips, but it does go long. Okay, that's all you need to know. Does it go long or does it go short? Okay, what about the body to tail ratio? You'll get you'll get better and better at the body to tail ratio as you practice. Okay, it doesn't have to be, uh, well, the as long as the tail is more than 60%, uh, you're okay. Okay, moving on forward. That's... Uh, Okay, tell me about this one. Is this a trend continuation pattern? Okay, I'm getting a yes and no's. Are you guys saying yes because of the next candle went long? What is the reasoning behind it? Give me reasons. Okay, Prince, it is in the direction of the uptrend, that is correct. It is also an upside down exhaustion, that is also correct. Is it bigger than the previous candle? No, that makes it invalid. Remember, just because it happened this time, it does, not, it does not mean it happens all the time. Okay. So this this makes it invalid. Now let's let's move on forward. Let's uh, continue to find a pattern. So let me see if this is this candle. What do you guys say? Correct or incorrect? Okay, we have a lot of, uh, okay, no wick underneath, supporting trend continuation. Okay, remember, remember, just, just focus on a couple of things, only a few things. Okay, is there a trend? Yes. Second question, is it bigger than the previous candle? If you have to think twice about it, don't trade it. Okay, that's as fast as you go. No need to waste time of, of putting together your entire Forex knowledge behind this. No. Two questions. Trend, yes or no? Bigger than a previous candle, yes or no? If they're both yes, then you move to the next question. Okay. In this particular case, there's doubts. If it's bigger than a previous candle, if it's smaller, all of that stuff, avoid it. Avoid it. Okay. Now, moving on uh, to the next example. Now, this one. Trend continuation pattern or not? So let me remove this one so you don't get confused. Okay. Yes, yes. All right, good. You guys are getting better at this now. Now, is there a trend? Yes, there's a downtrend happening. Okay. Next thing. The reason why we say there's a downtrend because there's a high then a lower high. There's a low, then a lower low. Okay, and then the next candle opens up. We also had a lower low. Uh, Kono is not within the last candle. Kono, I didn't say anything about being within the last candle. Uh, Abby, yes, it is. It is recorded. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, Zen, I am a bit confused with the exhaustion candle and trend continuation pattern. Okay, okay, Kono uh, and Zen, let's, uh, let's, let's do this uh, one more time. Let's do this one more time. 
Okay, is the sound okay for most of you guys? I'm sorry if the sound is a little bit off for some of you guys. Um, yes, okay. Okay, so let's uh, um, go back to a uh, couple of things. Okay, an exhaustion candle. Okay, when you have the market going in a trend, the market is going in an uptrend in this particular case. Market goes up in an uptrend, and then you have a pattern like this, which means a very large tail, and then uh, we have a small body. Okay, you can have a little tail on the other side also, that's okay, but a very large tail. Okay, is the candle bigger than the last candle? Yes. Okay, do we have a trend? Yes. Is the tail significant? Yes. These are all indications. You see, the market is trying to go north, but this tail indicates there's a lot of selling pressure. Lots of people, once the market went long in the hour, they keep pushing it down again and again and again. And because they keep pushing it down, you have this little body, little any any little body. Okay? That indicates there's going to be a reversal in the trend. Okay, so what happens is uh, once you have this uptrend and then you get an exhaustion, it reverses the market. Okay, uh, Zen and uh, who's the other one? Uh, uh, Kono, everyone, are you guys with me so far? Okay, yes. Okay, good. So. This is a pattern, and exhaustion is a pattern to reverse the market, to change the direction of the market. Okay, if you're in an uptrend, it will change the direction and take it down into a downtrend. Okay, how long it does that for? It does not matter. All we know is it changes into a downtrend. So in this particular case, yes. Now in a trend continuation pattern, you have this exact same pattern, but upside down. It's the other way. It's the other way. Now, you can see this. Which direction is this trend? Okay, the direction of this trend is down. For the market to reverse, where do we need the tail to be? If, if we want the market to go up. Okay. The tail should be here. There should be a large tail here indicating there's a lot of pressure coming in. But is that the case here? Okay, no. In this particular candle, there's a lot of pressure coming in from the top. This is just like an exhaustion. It is just the other way around. And this is in a downtrend. And the exhaustion is also saying go down. Okay, this is what we call a trend continuation pattern. Okay, in a trend continuation pattern, you need a couple of things. You need to make sure that the market is trending. You need to make sure the second thing is that it's uh, at least bigger than the previous candle. And the third, of course, you need to make sure it looks like an exhaustion. Okay, so uh, Kono and Zen, um, does it make sense, the difference between exhaustion and uh, trend continuation? Okay, so it's 8.17 now. I'm going to give you guys two more examples. We're going to go take this all the way up to 8.19 more or less. And I'm going to give you some false examples to um, make sure you guys know which one is correct and incorrect. And then we move to the next pattern. Okay, let's continue here. Now. Is this a trend continuation pattern? Okay, not really, not really, no, 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 good, very good. Okay, not a trend continuation pattern. First of all, immediately previous candle. Forget the body and everything. Previous candle, way too big. Okay, Hendrik, very good. Very good. Okay, moving on forward.
Is this a trend continuation pattern? Okay, reason, reason, reason. What is the reason why it's not? Good. Prince, good job. Sardar, uh, Sanjo, good. The previous candle is way too big. It's way too big. So, this is also incorrect. Okay. All right, so is everyone understanding the concept of a trend continuation pattern? Uh, anyone lost so far? Okay, uh, Hassan, I have a question. Okay, Hassan, what is your question? Andrej, do we look at body or whole candle to say it's bigger than previous candle? Uh, you look at the entire candle, Andre, uh, from the top to the bottom, like the high and the low, everything. Uh, Naveen, this analysis for candlestick, does it work on uh, upper one hour charts? It, it, works one, uh, it works on most charts, but uh, stick to the one hour. It's safer, much, much safer, trust me. Uh, one hour or higher, nothing below that. Anything below one hour chart is, is like swimming with the piranhas. Okay, what about this particular one? What do you guys say about this? Is this a uh, trend continuation pattern, yes or no? Okay, some say yes, some say no. Okay, now let's go through the questions. Let's go through the questions. Is there a trend? Answer that question first. Yes, there is a trend. Okay, it's in a downward momentum. Okay, second thing. Is this current candle that we're looking at, is it bigger than the previous candle? Okay, that's two yeses. Third question, is this an exhaustion, like an upside down exhaustion? Okay, third question is also yes. This is a trend continuation pattern. Okay, this means when the next candle opens up, no matter what it does, let it retrace and everything, but it's gonna head down, okay? That's what we call a trend continuation pattern. Okay. Now, for those of you who are still lost, you guys can uh, um, always look look through the recording. Um, but right now, we need to move to uh, the next. Uh, um, uh, Nasdeen looks like a pin bar. It is a pin bar, but it's an upside down pin bar. Okay, that is a trend continuation pattern. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Walter will go through all these uh, minor questions uh, towards the end, around uh, 8.35 on my time. Um, but right now, let's go to the next uh, um, next pattern. So everyone everyone with me so far? Uh, we did exhaustions and we did trend continuations. Okay, these two patterns we've done so far. Okay, now, what we're going to do now is one more trend continuation pattern, which we call uh, the false exhaustion. Uh, okay, Marvin, the three criteria for continuation. Okay, um, is it in a trend? Criteria one. Criteria two. Is it uh, uh, bigger than uh, the previous candle? Okay, and then criteria three. Does it look like an exhaustion? Okay. Wow, we have a full room here. We, I'm sure... Nobody else can get into the room now. We have a hundred people in here. It's packed. Okay. Now let's let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, is it in a trend? Is it bigger than previous? Uh, very good, Prince. Very good. Okay. So the next pattern we're going to discuss is also a uh, 
trend continuation pattern, but it's a different one. Okay, it's a different one. This is what we call a false exhaustion pattern. Okay, and uh, we'll get to what what that means in a bit. Um, let me see if I can find the next example. Let's start with here, and then we work our way to good ones and bad ones. This right here, this pattern here, is what we call a false exhaustion pattern. Okay, this is a name I've given it. Okay, I don't know what it's really called in the real life market. Um, I'm sure there are some, at least 20 names for it, but I call it a false exhaustion. Here's why. For this to be an exhaustion, the body must be smaller, right? Everyone agree with that? Because the tail is only 50% and so is the body. It's like half and half. But if the body were sharper, like over here, and this tail was this long, we would know it's a reversal in the market. It would change the direction of the market. In this particular case, it's not. This is what we call a false exhaustion. What a false exhaustion actually means is the market is, first of all, it's long, okay? But there is pressure also from the top, but not too much, not too much pressure, which means the market continues long, okay? The market continues long, but with a little bit of pressure coming in on it. Does that make sense? Uh, Nasdin, does the close have to be lower than the open? No. Okay, good, good, good. So everyone understands. Okay, let's move on to some more examples, and we do examples of uh, patterns that did not work. Okay. Is this a uh, trend continuation pattern by false exhaustion? Okay, mixed answers, mixed answers, why? Okay, let's, let's, let's go, let's, let's open this up, let's open this up. Now, for this to be an exhaustion, what must it be like? The body must be a little bit sharper, right? The body should be this big, like very, very tiny, like around here, right? Sorry, let me move it lower. The body should be around this big and the tail this big. That would indicate the market wants to reverse, correct? But, but for an exhaustion, what do we know about an exhaustion? Is this candle bigger than the previous candle? Okay, no, it's not. It's probably the same size, right? Uh, Jimmy says looks the same. Okay, good. When they're the same or if it's not, you avoid it. So this is not a clear trend continuation pattern. It means in the next candle, we don't know if it's going to actually go short. Okay, so this is a pattern that did not work. This is a perfect example of a trend continuation, but because the previous candle has so much strength, the chances are that we don't know what's going to happen in this one. The tail is quite big, the body is quite big, that's fine. But it's, it's a mixed sentiment on that one. Okay, let's, let's move on, let's move on. Aha! Now, let's, oh, sorry, let's do it one step at a time. Is this a trend continuation pattern? Okay, it's an upside down exhaustion. It's an upside down exhaustion, but no. First of all, 
yes, okay, we can say it is in a trend if we take a little bit larger trend. Okay, maybe. Okay, on a smaller scale, there is no trend. There's only one candle that says north. So, second thing, the previous candle looks bigger. So, it's, it's wrong. This is no good. Now, is this a trend continuation pattern? Okay, very good, very good. And now, those of you guys who are saying no, let me explain why. Let me explain why. Okay, do we have a trend now? Okay, let's say this particular candle closed. Okay, it closed and uh, we are here. Okay, we had we had a high, I mean a, a low, higher low, higher low. We had a high, higher high, and a higher high. We can clearly see the markets in an uptrend. Okay, so we have a trend. Second thing, is the, is the candle bigger than the previous candle? Yes. If this body here were to close all the way down here, would that be a good exhaustion to tell us that the market wants to go down? Yes. But it didn't do that. The body closed up here. We have a 50-50 almost lookalike here. The tail is big as the candle which means the market has a lot of pressure to go north and it has also some pressure to the south indicating the next candle continues long but with some pressure you can see the strength of the next candle how far did it go not too far okay everyone with me so far does that does that make sense Do a couple more examples. We'll go. We'll go through the reasoning behind that, and then around 8:35, um, we stop it there, and uh, we we'll go through any questions you guys might have. Um, okay. Is this a trend continuation pattern? Okay. No. No. Uh, Andres, uh, your, your answer to your question is uh, no, no. We we leave it alone if it has a problem like that. Okay, so everyone is saying no. Okay, weaker than the previous. The previous candle is way too big, way too big. Okay, so no. All right. Trend continuation pattern here. Yes, it's an upside down exhaustion, bigger than a previous candle, and it's also in a trend. Next candle opens, goes long. Okay. Is this a pattern? What kind of pattern is this one? Good, very good. Exhaustion, hammer, pin bar, yes. Good. Now, what about this one? Okay, the answer is no. This is not an exhaustion. The previous candle is way too big. Okay. Remember, just because the next candle went north does not make this valid. Okay. Now, going to the next question. Is this a trend continuation pattern? No. Previous candle was too big. Good, good, very good, very good. Okay, very basic concept. First thing that comes to your mind, previous candle. First thing, previous candle. If you cannot look at the previous candle, you're, you're thinking too much. Stop thinking too much. Just focus. Previous candle and then move on. Don't think way too much. Don't overanalyze. There's no point for overanalyzing. Okay, is this a trend continuation pattern?
Okay, the answer is no. Good. What about this one? Good, good. So you guys are catching on. Good job. Okay. So we've learned three patterns today. And these are the three most uh, popular patterns in terms of predicting the direction of the market. The one is an exhaustion candle. Of course, you guys know what reasons they must be clear. This one is clear or not clear. Okay, good, good. Not clear. Previous candle, too big. Okay, so three patterns, right? Exhaustion candle a false exhaustion, and then we have an upside down exhaustion. All we're using is these exhaustions, just in different methods. And, and then you get to sense the direction. Now, there is one more pattern, which we call a consolidation pattern, is when you have smaller candles, and you can see the body almost being in between. Okay, a lot of you guys might call this doji. I personally call this doji all the time. For me, these are all dojis to me. Dojis have no sense of direction, okay? Although the books tell you the, these are reversal patterns, they're not. Open your books, check out all the markets, open the markets and check them out. It's not, okay? It's simply a body on top, I, I mean a tail on top, tail on bottom. Okay, can you guys, excuse me one moment, please? Hello? Hey, what's up, dude? Yeah, yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still working too. Hey, can you do me? A, can I do? Can I do you a favor? I'm in a seminar. Can I call you back in like five minutes? Uh, all right, take care. See ya. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, yes, iPhone for us. <laughs> okay. So these are our consolidation patterns, where the markets pretty much halt. Okay, uh, tails on top, tails on bottom, and small candles. This whole area is a consolidation zone. You can see small candles, tail on top, tail on bottom. Okay. So that is pretty much our candlestick formations. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Any questions related to candlestick? Let's go through all the questions related to candlesticks first, and then you guys can ask me any other questions later. Okay, all period indication indicated by Doji needs supporting evidence for direction. No. Uh, Abhinav, uh, there, okay, this is just pattern recognition. This is to understand which direction the market's going. It's not a signal service. It's not like, okay, because it's long, you're going to enter long, you're going to buy now, and then you're going to sell later. No, no, no. It just tells you how to see which direction the markets are going. Okay, you can add this into any system you want. You can plug it into any system you want. Okay, Mike, uh, should a true true reversal bar need to close inside the previous bar uh, for uh, exhaustion candle? Yes, yes, that is that is correct. Uh, Abhinav, try to avoid scalping, but if you have not done much of it, then go for it. Do it. Get it out of your system. But uh, if you can avoid it, avoid it. Uh, Mark, is a trend higher high and lower low by body or tail or either? Uh, by tail, Mark. Uh, Zen, is it a signal to enter the trade? No. Zen, these, these patterns are not signals. Okay. These, if you use these patterns in correlation, maybe. Then, then you have a, a proper system. Okay, if you use this with a pro trading strategy, if all seven pairs are doing the similar things, you can trade it to the next, uh, you know, during your next uh, pivot line. Okay, uh, Chris, uh, these are the candle formations you follow with your strategy. Yes, yes. So there are, what about with support and resistance? Yes, you can use it with support. It's the same thing with the pro trading strategy. You use it with support and resistance. Robert, uh, but you can use the signals with pro yes, yes. Uh, Jota, that continuation pattern is the most confusing of all. Can you write specific rules for the continuation pattern? Um, I I avoid writing rules because you cannot trap the market with certain rules. 
Um, but, uh, um, okay, trend continuation patterns uh, for upside down exhaustion. Three criteria. Is it in a trend? Okay, number two. Um, uh, what was the other one? Is it bigger than the previous candle? And number three, is it, uh, does it look like an exhaustion candle? Okay, Chris Mann, so you keep all other candlestick formations out. Yes, yes. Because take a look at the charts. Take a look at my screen. They're nothing but exhaustion candles, trend continuation, and false exhaustion. Every little thing, if I go into detail, I can give 200 names on just that one screen that I'm looking at. We simplified it into three things. Okay. So just uh, this is how you can uh, focus with these th three things only, and try not to overanalyze things because it will it will confuse you. Okay. Uh, Kasim, one long candle is a trend. Uh, what is the minimum? Um, I, I don't understand. Kasim, can you ask that question again? What What do you mean by minimum? Nelson, finish up your book already. Yeah, it, the book will release next year. I'm so not uh, not progressing with that so far. Not not good at writing. Uh, Phil, uh, did you do a correlation webinar last week? Yes, Phil, I did. It will be released this week on YouTube. Ronald, uh, if it's smaller than the previous candle, it cannot break the trend. Uh, answer, so it's uh, in a way also a trend continuation. Yes, correct, Ronald. Raymond, false exhaustion one more time. Okay, let's do false exhaustion one more time. Let's see here. So, let's... Uh, okay. First of all, um, Ron, uh, where is it? Raymond, first of all, can we use this as... A, first, the question you want to ask yourself is, is this an exhaustion? Okay. No, this is not an exhaustion. Okay, for this to be an exhaustion, it must be bigger than the previous candle. In this particular case, it's not. So, if it cannot be an exhaustion, it cannot be a false exhaustion. Also. Okay, that's that. Let's move forward to show you more examples. Now. Let me see if I can show you near the current market. Okay. False exhaustion. Okay, there's some here. Okay. There's one here and a potentially one here. Now, this one here, if you take a look closely, the pattern is for a short. The trend is short. If this particular candle ended up looking like an exhaustion, which means the body closed tight, like all the way up here, and we had this long tail it would have possibly reversed the market, right? Okay, uh, Raymond? Okay, yeah, it would possibly reverse the market if the body was really sharp, like, like a little box over here, and then this big tail. But it didn't do that. In fact, you have a large body, and you have a tail, maybe like 40% big, quite a large tail. This indicates a false exhaustion which means the next candle will go short but not too strong because what this indicates is the market has a strong movement excuse me the market has a strong movement for a short but there is some buying pressure coming in this is the reason why you have some tail here like a pretty decent sized tail so the next candle actually ends up going short but you can see it didn't go too far right same thing happened here 
if you see this pattern, this pattern, if the next candle, uh, if, if this particular candle, let me let me clean all this up. If this particular candle, if it closed up here near the open, would you be confirmed that we are we are going long? So that would be a perfect exhaustion, right? Because the previous candle is small and this is a massive candle. Okay? So, but it didn't do that. But we know what, what do we know from this information? Massive candle indicating a short plus pressure coming in from the bottom as well, which means the next candle continues short, but not for long. And that's why you see the next candle opened here. And this is how far as it went. It couldn't breach the previous candle so as far as it went same thing it did over here once this candle hap um, was done the next candle opened up it went down but it could not breach the previous candle because there's too much buying pressure but you know the direction you know where it's headed same thing happened here you know where it was headed but it halted does that make sense Okay, good, good. All right, guys, I am going to have to cut the webinar now. It is 8.45. We've gone over this by an uh, hour and 15 minutes. Um, Andres, yes, uh, one hour or above is always good. Okay, thank you so much for attending. I hope you guys got a lot to learn from this uh, particular webinar. And, uh, oh, yes, uh, Walter, if you're living in the EST, uh, try to wake up as early as you can. Um, European session going all the way to uh, mid US session is the best times around 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time 12 1 2 maximum Okay, have a very good night guys and uh, thanks again for attending I will probably see you guys on the next webinar which is on Wednesday and uh, Do do please do help me um, Comment on these videos when I post it up on YouTube you can comment below the video also help me share them and like them if you obviously like it thanks a lot take care have a good night